Hey there. Uh, I grew up Catholic in the Midwest, in St. Louis. And when I was a boy, I did not like to do things that boys did. I didn't uh, like to play sports, didn't care about sports, uh, didn't like to play with guns, uh, didn't like to wrestle, didn't like to get dirty. Um, and I felt strange about it. Uh, I felt like I had somehow chosen to be different. Uh, I had somehow chosen myself and I had chosen wrong. Um, because even the people who loved me said, do this, because this is what boys do. Here's a football, go play with it, because that's what boys do. Here, let me take the People magazine, here's a football, go outside and play with it, because that's what boys do. Um, and I felt, I felt defective growing up. Uh, and in my teenage years, when puberty happened and sexual feelings started to pop up, uh, I had them, and I had them about men. Um, I had them about Huey Lewis. The first few seconds of that I Want a New Drug video still get me to this day. Uh, I got picked on a lot uh, growing up because I was different. Um, kids are terrible. Kids are cruel. I was at my cruelest when I was a kid. Um, and kids are cruel because they're terrified. Everybody feels a little bit different. And because of that, they lash out at people with more obvious differences. I had them, so I got picked on. You might have them, so you might get picked on. To me, much worse than getting picked on was this. Uh, people that I looked up to, my brothers, uh, the cool kids at school, or whatever, uh, when they would talk about somebody who they perceived as gay, um, that's all that person was. Um, if there was somebody who was, if there was a boy who was a little girly, um, and, and their name came up, uh, somebody would do the limp wrist or somebody would say fag or, or whatever. And then that person was just dismissed. It, there was no, nothing else important about that person. Why bother even talking about that person anymore? They're a fag. That's that. Uh, people who sort of conform to gender norms got to be multidimensional people with traits and talents and flaws and the whole bit. But gay people were just gay and that's that. No need for any further discussion. And that scared me to death because I felt like a real person and I wanted to be perceived as a real person. And I wanted to grow up to be somebody who was proud and who uh, made the people he loved proud. Uh, and I didn't think that I could be because inside I felt different. And that is a terrible burden for a kid to carry. I should not have had to carry it and you shouldn't have to carry it. Uh, and you don't have to carry it forever. I am telling you, it gets better. Once you get out into the real world, you'll notice that there's not just a lot of people, but there's a lot of different ways to live. Uh, I moved to New York, which is a huge city, and it's super dense, and there's a huge breadth of people there. There are so many different people and so many different ways to live and so many different interests and so much going on that the fact that I was gay was like, who cares? Who cares? You're gay and what else? Um, the, the fact that I was interested in things that weren't stereotypically male things to be interested in was like not even a consideration at all. And in fact, it wasn't until I embraced those things, uh, it wasn't until I started to look at the things that I was passionate about as assets rather than liabilities that my life really changed. And the life that I wanted when I was a 13-year-old with a crush on Huey Lewis became my life um, because I got truer to myself. Now, growing up, I never dreamed that I would be gay and proud, and I am. Uh, it never occurred to me that I would have a family who knew the real me and loved the real me, and I do. Uh, it never, never occurred to me that I would ever be able to bring a boyfriend home and have my parents like him, and I have, and they love him. Uh, I never dreamed that I would have the friends that I have who are so smart and and so confident and so funny, and and some are gay and some are straight, and nobody cares. And when there's a football game on, some people want to watch it and some people don't. And nobody cares which of those groups you fall into. It just doesn't matter. So if things are bad right now, here's my advice to you. Use this time in isolation to figure out what it is that you love to do. Uh, and then do that thing as often as you can. Learn as much as you can about it. Read everything you can get your hands on about it and be the best that you can be at the thing that you love to do. And that way, when this time ends, and it will, and you get out into the world, you will have a talent, and you will have a passion, and you'll have attracted some good people to you. 
uh, and you won't let this time make you an angry person or a bitter person. Um, do what you love to do, and I guarantee you there's a place in this world where someone will pay you to do it. So find it. Now, I'm not telling you that you're never going to come across somebody who judges you for your sexuality. Uh, we see this every day. On the news, each day there is a new jackass. Um, you're going to come across some people who think differently of you because you're gay. Uh, I can tell pretty easily when somebody's judging me uh, for being gay, and that is a quick and easy way for me to know that I am talking to an idiot, uh, someone who is not worthy of my time or attention, and somebody who can't come to the party, and it's a good party, and your party is going to be a really good one. Um, yeah, you're going to come across some jerks in your life, but you're also going to be uh, much better at dismissing them. And I guarantee you, the person who's giving you the hardest time right now is someone you're going to run into in a gay club in about 10 years. That has been true about 100% of the time, in my experience. There is a big, beautiful world out there waiting for you. It gets better. Trust me. Good luck.